Hello everyone, it's your girl Cherry here and today we are at, I think week, is it week four? Week four of the Robin Hood Challenge. If you're not familiar with the Robin Hood Challenge, it is basically depositing $200 to my Robin Hood portfolio for dividend investing. Investing in stocks that pay you dividends. And I've been doing this for almost a month now. This is my fourth week doing this. This is so, so, so exciting because ever since I've done the Robin Hood Challenge, it's like seriously a miracle because I've been losing a lot of money from just blindly investing and mindlessly investing and going for really volatile stocks. But ever since I've done the Robin Hood challenge, ever since I started with dividend investing, my returns just kept going up, up and up. And so let's take a look at my portfolio so you know what I'm talking about. So this is my portfolio to date. I'm at uh, $11,914.06. And I am already up by $50 today, and that is 0.42%. And by the week, I am up by $150.83, and that is 1.28%. And by the month, I am up by $729.23, which is 6.52%. And honestly, I don't know why there's like a dip over here September 16th. I think it's a glitch because I don't remember seeing any dip during that time. And then here's a three month. This is $769.14, up by 6.9%. And this is just for the past three months. And by the year, I am up by $1,238.91. And this is almost 12%, 11.61%. And all time, all time chart, I am so down, but it is, the gap is getting smaller and smaller. I'm getting closer to breaking even. It is because I was losing around $3,000 over here, December 17th, because of cryptocurrency and other really volatile investments. So I was down by like 3,000 over here. So right now I'm only down by less than a thousand, $928.05, down by 7.23% compared to my lowest point, which is 24.62%. So this is definitely an improvement from my huge loss that I took in December of 2018. So after looking at my portfolio, I'm really happy that I have three free stocks that I'm going to open right here on camera. I'm not gonna make the rookie mistake of um, claiming the stock without being on camera. All right, free stocks. So thank you so much for using my link. So first we have Moses M. Let's claim this free stock and then choose the middle one. Script reveal. Ooh. So exciting. Ooh, General Electric, I already have the stock. So it's going to be added to my portfolio. This is $9.36, General Electric just makes, um, I guess, electric. <laughs> what, what can I say? <laughs> Electronics. And then let's go to, show, is this children, show, children us? Okay, let's claim this. Um, let's choose the right one. Right one, and then. Start scrubbing. This is T R O X. Oh, Tronox. Tronox. I think I already have this one. This seems like a pretty, uh, pretty popular one. This is nine dollars and fifty-seven cents. So almost ten bucks. I got this last week, also in my last free stock. And then there is also Barbara. Barbara S. Thank you so much for using my link. Let's see. Let's choose a left one this time. <laughs> I don't think that makes a difference. Oh, I have Ford. Nice. Ford is also around 10 bucks, $9.28. So that concludes our free stocks. And then let's go to my portfolio. Yay. So with these included, my portfolio is now at $11,942.25. And so let's take a look at my history. So here's my history with a bunch of dividend. 
Uh, let's start with the beginning of this week. So on the 15th, I deposit $200 because this is part of the Robinhood challenge. And let's take a look at the first dividend I got this week, which is from SD Lauder. It paid me 43 cents on September 16th. And then there is also STAG, Stag Industrial. It paid me 48 cents and I have four shares of it. So it is about 12 cents per share. And then there is also APLE, Apple Hospitality, REIT, and it is 10 cents each, so it's 20 cents in total. And then there is also Main. Okay, this is the first stock that I bought this week, Main Street Capital, again, a real estate stock, and it also pays really good dividend, and I bought it at a limit buy of $43.26. And let's take a look at Main Street Capital. The current market price is at $43.49, and then my average cost is $43.30, so I am winning by 38 cents, my total return. And then you can see here is the expected EPS, the faded green, and the actual EPS, which is the solid green. And uh, hopefully I get paid dividends for this. I'm kind of confused about this one because for the dividend yield, it shows me nothing. So I'm not even sure if I'm going to be paid dividend for this stock, but this is a pretty well-known dividend stock. So I'm not sure if it's just Robin Hood or like what is going on because it just shows me like a dash over here. And Main Street Capital is a business development company. It uh, does debt and equity financing solutions to uh, lower middle market companies. So again, in the real estate industry, a lot of dividend paying stocks are in the real estate industry. And then let's take a look at uh, my next purchase is TPR Tapestry. I love this stock. Um, this is a dividend paying stock. Currently it's pretty low. I want to say the price is pretty low. And Tapestry is the parent company of Kate Spade, of uh, Stuart Weitzman, all these, I want to say kind of middle, middle market, a middle market semi luxury brands. And then Stuart Weitzman makes shoes. Kate Spade makes clothes, shoes, handbags, just really cutesy girly things and I currently have 12 shares of this currently my average cost is $29.89 and then my equity is $301.92 I'm having a loss of 15.84% but I'm not too too worried about this because I do enjoy all their products all the brands underneath this parent company and I believe in the long-term growth of this company and they also pay pretty handsome dividends, so I'm not too worried about the temporary loss. So let's look at, next is O, which is Realty Income, which is kind of an OG dividend stock, and I have purchased this at $73. Let's take a look at O. So this is Realty Income, current market price is $75.77. And then we can see the average cost is $74.45. This is the average cost of the shares that I own. I have five shares of this. My equity is $378.85. And then you can see my total return is $6.62. Pretty good dividend payout. Also, you can see that the actual EPS is consistently beating the expected EPS, which is the faded green. And then you can see just me trying to dollar average my way down. At first, I bought it at $72.80, which I think is the lowest price. And then somehow I did not fill my limit buys because the price kept going up. And so I kind of panicked market bought one, which is $75.68. And then I did another Another limit by around the same time $75.46 and then $75.29 and $73 today so this is me trying to dollar average my way down and then after realty income let's look at the this dividend this dividend is from yum China which is a restaurant holding company it paid me 12 cents and then I only have one share of this. My average cost is pretty low, it's at $38.65. I bought this a while ago. My total return is $7.85, which is up by 20.31%, which is pretty good. And uh, it's been paying me pretty consistent dividend, 12 cents, 10 cents, uh, ever since September of 2018. And then I bought this in June of 2018. So that is Yum China, and then also um, GE, General Electric, and then uh, this is the free stock that I just got. Let's take a look at this. I already have five shares of this. My average cost is $13.17 because I did 
buy this at like a relatively high price. And then let's look at the description, American multinational corporation, uh, I can't even pronounce this word, <laughs> Con conglomerate, okay, I I'm not gonna butcher this, but um, General Electric does electronics, um, and here are all the dividends that were paid out. In 2018, it paid pretty handsome dividend, but it, I guess it got cut or something. Pretty sure it got cut, yeah, it got cut big time. And so, yeah, I got another free General Electric, which is pretty handsome. And then here is uh, per share, one cent per share, and then four cent for four shares. And you can see the trend. I remember the trend is pretty bad, yeah. It kept going down, so if you ask me whether or not I want to buy this stock with my own money right now, Probably not because this overall trend is just not very hopeful. But again, General Electric is a pretty, um, it's been here for a while and it's a pretty big corporation. So to each their own, I just wouldn't do it with, I guess my current investing strategy with dividend investing and looking at the um, historical performances, it is definitely not a very safe bet if I were to invest with my own money. But of course, free stock is always good. And then let's take a look at Tapestry. So Tapestry, I again bought um, several tapestries today on the 17th, uh, $25.5, $25.44, $25. I am trying to dollar average my way down and I also deposited an extra, oh, I deposited $100? No, interesting. Oh no, um, this was a while ago. Uh, I deposited $50 to buy more at Tapestry. And then here is, yeah, here's the past 30 days. And then you can see that I am trying to sell a couple of stocks. Um, Tapestry I'm trying to buy, and then this is the Aerotech, which I am trying to sell because honestly, I don't know why I have the stock and I have three shares of this at $3.74. And then I am losing almost five bucks, <laughs> losing by 40%. This is not paying me any dividend. I don't know why I have this. Honestly, it's like one of those mystery stocks that I have no idea why I bought. So that's Aerotech. And then there is also Tilray. Tilray, another stock that I am really hoping to sell. Hoping to sell at a relatively good price because my average cost is like super high. And um, I am down by 78%, 70, almost 79%. This is so bad. I lost like $221.49 just from this one stock and just from two shares also. And then there is also Jivo, which is also another mystery stock that I don't know why I bought, which I'm trying to sell because I'm trying to, I guess, reallocate my investments more in dividend investing and less in like random stocks that I just bought because I did not know what I was doing. And so this is Jivo. And you can see my average cost is $10.40. Overall, I'm losing 68.57% percent by $42.81. So this is pretty bad, honestly, like down by 60, almost 69%. And then you can see the EPS is consistently in the negatives. I don't know why I bought this. I don't know what was going on in my head when I bought this. And then you can also see Baozun, which is also another stock that I bought because of the hype. And um, I think currently I'm, I'm not losing by that that much compared to the other ones. I am losing $18, which is 15.88%. My average cost is $56.76. And then you can see the overall trend. Overall trend doesn't look that bad, but I, I just don't know enough about this company to keep holding on to this. And it is also not paying me any dividend. So goes against my dividend investing strategy. And here is the, yeah, the, here's the EPS chart. And then there's also Alibaba. I'm just too heavily invested in Alibaba and it is also not paying me any dividend. The stock itself is doing pretty good upward trend for for all the times, it's upward trending. And then my average cost is $175.76. And then I have 10 shares of this. 
My total return is $31.63, positive return up by 1.8%, but I just feel like I'm too heavily invested in this. I have almost like $1,800 in just one stock and I just don't see the point. I'd rather use this money to invest in something that gives me dividends instead of just like heavily invested in just one stock. So that is just my current investing strategy. And then there is also Jingdong, uh, JD.com. This I'm also trying to sell i think i only have like yeah i only have one share of this I'm trying to sell it at my break even point because th there's a lot of things about the ceo that i don't like the jingdong ceo was accused of like rape and some not very glamorous things and i know you shouldn't really judge a stock by the ceo but i personally just don't want to hold on to this and uh, it, it is actually beating, the actual EPS is actually beating the expected EPS, but I just don't feel like holding the stock and it also did not pay me any dividend. There's also Sina. Sina is the parent company of Weibo, uh, Xinlong. And then I am, I think I lost like, wow, I lost a lot. I don't know why I have five shares of this, but total, in total I lost 32.7% and that is $108.44. And here are the one uh, five year chart, one year chart, three month, one month, one week, and one day. And so I'm pretty heavily invested in this because I think at the time I just really enjoy using Weibo, which is one of their products. But in the long run, since it's also not paying me any dividend, I don't really see why I should hold on to like all five shares. I'm trying to slowly sell off my my shares. My first purchase of this was in 2018 and uh, it's already a long-term capital gain if I were to gain anything. So I am not worried about selling off this. And I did try to dollar average my way down from $89 to $38, but it's still not enough because my average cost is still too high and I am still losing money. And then there is also job, which is something that I have no idea why I bought, GEE group. Uh, uh. It's like going to zero. It's really sad. I have three shares of this. I lost 77.39%, uh, which is only like six bucks, but still like this is pretty bad. Just look at how the stock plummets, 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 and plummets. Almost at every date range, five year mark, one year mark, three month mark, one month mark, and one week mark. That should be a wrap, but yeah, it's all going downhill. It's like a slippery slope and can't believe this stock was once at like, what, $18? I can't even see, it. it's so hard to see, but yeah. Um, kinda sad, I don't know why I bought into this. It's negative EPS, it's not making money, and uh, I don't even know why I bought this. And I bought three shares, like what was I thinking? And uh, it's like staffing solutions. Honestly, I don't even know why I invested in this. It's like one of those mystery stocks again. And then is there anything else? Uh, job, J-O-B, and then there is also my PSEC dividend, which is coming in two days. Yeah, in two days, PSEC. It's gonna pay me six cents in dividends, and I don't know why it's being so slow. Okay, PSEC is paying me six cents for my one share in PSEC, and I think I bought did I buy more? No, I only bought one. Uh, and this is kind of risky because you can see that the EPS is actually going downhill, which is actually not a very good sign, but at least it's paying me a dividends. So that is something. And then there is also eBay. eBay is paying me 28 cents for dividends and Something is going on with Robinhood, bro. You had one job. Okay, this is eBay and I will be paid 28 cents in total for my two shares. So that is 14 cents each. And that is on the 19th. And there's also FIS, Fidelity National Information. So this is uh, financial services technology, Fidelity, the platform where you have your 401k and all that stuff. It's been paying pretty consistent dividend. I bought it at a pretty low price. And then, yeah, um, it is currently at a 26.8% return, which is $28.41. And then it is going to pay me 35 cents in dividends, which is pretty handsome. And then there is also NASDAQ. NASDAQ is paying me 47 cents for my one share. And then this is also a pretty good performing stock, 23%, uh, which is $19.22. And I bought it at $83.51. And uh, let's just look at the description of this. 
Nasdaq is the holding company which engages in trading, clearing, exchange, technology regulatory, securities, listing information, and public and private company services. A mouthful, but I'm pretty sure a lot of you know what Nasdaq is. So this is Nasdaq. Fun, fun, fun. And then there's also Bank of America paying me 36 cents for my two shares. So that is 18 cents each. And then I am currently, uh, there is a 3% growth, $1.76 for my two shares. And then there is also Tapestry paying me $2.7, uh, $2.70, handsome, handsome paycheck. And currently I have more than eight. I think I have like, 11, 12, I have 12 shares of this. And even though overall I have a loss, it is still paying me pretty handsome dividend all this time. Pretty handsome dividend. And then there is also ADT, the securities company, paying me uh, four, four cents for my one share. And then there is also Petroleum, Occidental Petroleum, and it is paying me $2.37 for my three shares, and this is super handsome pay. Uh, a $45 share price, and then I am losing by like 7%, 7.43%, losing by 10 bucks, but the dividend payout is pretty handsome. Just look at this. And uh, EPS is slightly going down, and then you can see I'm trying to dollar average my way down, but uh, still losing money. But dividend payout is seriously pretty handsome. And then the last one is General Electric dividend. And then I have four shares of this. Here is my General Electric. I am losing 28.92%, which is $19.04. But uh, here is the dividend payout, which is pretty consistent. They did do a dividend cut over here after October, but after that, I mean, it's still it's still income. It's still income. I don't think I'm gonna sell General Electric anytime soon either. I'm probably going to hold it for the long term. So that is my week four of dividend investing. I really hope you guys enjoy the transparency and me sharing everything in my portfolio, all my gains and losses, wins and losses, because because it does take some courage to, I guess, be super transparent with how much money I have in my portfolio and uh, how much money I'm making or losing. But I just want this to be like a super transparent situation where you can learn from, where you can see, because honestly, it's so hard to learn about personal finance without seeing the results, without seeing the numbers. Like I know a lot of personal finance people, like personal finance YouTubers, they talk about their portfolio, but they never show the actual numbers. They only talk about the allocation of their money and honestly that is super vague I don't like that personally I do not appreciate the lack of transparency for some of these personal finance channels so that is why I decided to share my entire portfolio with entire transparency with all the gains and losses that I am taking on at each period of my investment time and I recently watched Bruce Wang's video about how he is at a year-to-date 18% growth in his Robinhood portfolio and I really hope that one day I can also reach 18% year to date growth. That is super awesome growth. And by then I also hope that I can break even in my all time charts and recover from my crypto losses and super volatile investment losses. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe, hit that bell button. I upload three times every week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 3.30 p.m. PST. I love you all. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for all your support, and I will see you in my next personal finance video.